Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis, and coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Tevet. And Tevet is the month of growing up, it's the month of vision, and getting our priorities in order. And when we think about this, especially here in the new biblical year of the door, we need God's wisdom, we need his maturity as we see the doors before us in our lives. And even as this new month begins, we are in the middle of Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights, and to me that underscores how the Lord leads us and guides us and grows us up. It's by his word, the lamp unto our feet and his love. So blessings as you watch the teaching and happy and blessed to bet in Jesus. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Tevet. And Tevet is the 10th month in God's spiritual calendar. And the number 10 is associated with order, tithe, and testimony. And so in this month of Tevet, the Lord is encouraging us to get things in order, to get our priorities straight, actually a time to grow up, a call to maturity in Him. And my name is Christine Vallis, and I am blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar in real time in our lives. So thank you so much for tuning in. So, you know, often we resist growing up, but in Hebrews 12 says this, discipline seems painful at the time, but later on it will produce a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And you know, we can be encouraged guys because the way the Lord grows us up is by his word. It says this in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says all scripture is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. So maturing in God is really a good thing, right? Because it equips us for good works. And good is connected to the month of Tevet because this word Tevet comes from the Hebrew root word of Tov, which means good. And in Genesis 1-3, we see the first mention of this word good or Tov and it says, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. So I believe that's what the Lord is up to in this season. He's always up to that. But the Lord wants to separate the light from the darkness in our lives. He wants to shed light on things in our lives so that we can see clearly. And it's his word that is a lamp unto our feet. And it leads us and it matures us step by step. And I came across this scripture this week and I thought, wow, this really summarizes the month of Tevet. And it says here in Proverbs 6, 20 through 23, to bind his commandments on your heart always and tie them around your neck. And when you walk, they will lead you. And when you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment of God is a lamp and his teaching is a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. So growing up in God and abiding in his word is truly a good thing. So let's get in his word and let's be encouraged because we are not only moving into a new month, but actually a whole new season, right? It is the season of winter. And often a lot of us think that winter is a cold, dead season, kind of a season of defeat, but that is not true because it is known as a season of victory and joy. And God's word over us is always one of encouragement, no matter Matter what season we're in so we are in a season of victory and joy because you know as we move through life we do not battle for the victory 
because as believers, we move from a position of victory because the battle has already been won in the spirit by Jesus. So our future is bright and even our now is bright in him. And the word says that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. And all we have to do is abide in him and in his word. So now the month of Tevet is connected to our vision. And so, you know, part of maturity is how we see things, right? Our perspective on things. It's how we look at things because we know that two people can see the very same situation, but see it in two different ways, right? Someone can look at a situation and see hope and another person can look at it and see hopelessness, right? And so the Jews call this the battle of the evil eye versus your good eye. And actually in Matthew 6, 22, it talks about this. It says the eye is the lamp to the body. And if your eye is good, basically if you're looking things from God's perspective, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, then your whole body will be full of darkness. So we need to guard our eyes and get our eyes in his word, right? So I want you to check out the book of Ephesians chapter one and two, because I thought the first two chapters really talk about our vision. And the first thing I thought about was the prayer in Ephesians chapter one that asks the Lord that the eyes of our heart may be enlightened to know the hope of our calling, his calling on our lives. So how do we get our eyes enlightened? Well, when we get a revelation of God's true nature and his great love for us, revelation happens. It's like a light goes on, right? I'm sure you guys have experienced this. It's like suddenly you get it. And so God wants us to get a fresh revelation of who he is and how much he loves us, not just once, but every day of our lives. And more and more our hearts will be enlightened because we'll discover like, wow, I am loved by God. I have authority. God is for me. He is not against me. I have a future and a hope in him and the same resurrection power that lives in Jesus lives in me as a believer. And the next section of Ephesians chapter 2 talks about how we are seated in heavenly places. Ephesians 2 6 says that God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, which is now, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. So this is our true position as believers that we are seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father with Jesus. I think a lot of times we forget that, but this is our true position in him. We have this seat of authority, love, favor, rest, and perspective, right? If you're seated in heavenly places, that means you have a heavenly bird's eye view, right? From God's perspective. So we can see things as he sees them. And often when we lose our perspective, it's probably because we got up out of that seat. <laughs> so the Lord is saying, you know, know your position and see things from my perspective and that will bring us great rest. Now the Hebrew letter this month is also connected with our vision. It is the letter Ayin. It's depicted right here. It looks like this and it means an eye. It means a spring to know or to watch and it's also connected with focus and vision. So again, it's a time to get focused, to slow down, to take inventory, to get our priorities straight, 
It's a time to ask the Lord how to advance, how to move forward, perhaps in our education or in our work, or he may tell us just to remain steady in those things. But we are not going to know any of that unless we get with him. We get our eyes on his word and we even meditate and chew on his word and even review those prophetic words that were spoken over us. So where is our focus right now and what do we imagine even for the new year ahead? Is that bringing us fear or peace? And so the Lord says, bring me your plans and I will order your step and my perfect love will cast out any fear. And again, his word is a lamp unto our feet and the entrance of his word brings light. And Proverbs 3 Verses 5 through 12, it's a popular one, but it's an awesome verse to meditate upon and remind us this month to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will make our path straight. We are not to be wise in our own eyes, right? But to fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And this will also bring healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. There's so much benefit, right, to trusting God. It goes on to say, And my son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects his son in whom he delights. And he does this by his word, just as a loving father would. So let's keep our eyes on him and in his word. Now, another thing about the letter I in, it has a value of 70. So 70 is connected with our eyes and vision. Now, 80 is connected with our mouth. And so 70 comes before 80. So there's an order to this. You want to look before you speak, right? And even this year, we're in the decade of the 80s about our mouth, about speaking, decreeing, declaring. And there is great wisdom when we look before we speak. When we evaluate situations from where? Seated from our heavenly perspective and then speak out or perhaps not at all, right? And so, you know, anybody can just keep running and and moving forward, even as we move into the new year. Um, Sometimes we're just so excited to start a new year, but there is great maturity in pausing and looking back at the past year, just looking back at what God has done, thanking him for what he has done, evaluating things, and then speaking forward or even writing things forward, perhaps in your journal or whatever. And even Habakkuk 2.2 says, write the vision and make it plain so that you can run with it. So we don't want to run without stopping looking back and getting God's perspective on things and his call on our lives, his word for our future. All right, guys. Well, another way of growing up fast is through fasting. You know, it's proven scientifically that fasting actually puts things in order in our bodies. It purifies our bodies. There's great benefits in fasting. But when we combine fasting with focusing on God's word, we position ourselves to hear God with great clarity. In fact, in this month of Tibet, there is a fast that commemorates the siege of Jerusalem. You can read about that in Jeremiah chapter 39. So there is a fast day in Tibet. It is the 10th day of Tibet, but you may consider fasting perhaps another day after the holidays or as the Lord leads you. And you know, when I think about fasting, one biblical character that usually comes to mind is Queen Esther. And something that I learned is that actually Esther is connected to this month of Tibet. Check it out in Esther chapter two, because this is the month when Esther was crowned queen. So, you know, we can learn a lot, not only from Esther's fasting, but from her maturity, right? Because Esther, although she was a young girl, she had great maturity. You know, she was raised 
by her uncle Mordecai, who was a very godly man, and he raised her in the way that she should go. And as she grew, she did not depart from the way from the Lord, but she grew in wisdom. She knew she was loved by her uncle, and she knew that she was loved by God himself. And that gave her great courage, great maturity, great focus and vision, and she fulfilled her calling to deliver God's people. Esther is such a great example to us in this month and, and all the time, really, but I, I encourage you to check out the book of Esther this month and be encouraged that we are called to be like Esther too for such a time as this. Now, the Lord also wants to grow us up in our emotions. And up here we have, be angry, but sin not. That's out of Ephesians 4. And you know, God gave us our emotions as indicators. And we see even in the New Testament that Jesus himself had righteous anger. And so we can too, right? And so these emotions that God gave us, again, are indicators, but we cannot be controlled by them. God has called us to be childlike, not childish, having temper tantrums. He wants us to be mature in our emotions. But how do we do this? The word tells us right in Galatians 5, it says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. So we can only walk by the Spirit if the Spirit of God is in us, right? So if you've never received Jesus, I encourage you to do so because when you receive him into your heart, when you confess him as the Lord of your life, the Holy Spirit comes in you. You are sealed forever with his Spirit. And that includes all the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, peace, patience, joy, kindness. They're all there in Galatians, right? And that includes self-control. So we have the fruit of the Spirit in our spirit to the full. It's like we're not going to get more of the Holy Spirit when we get to heaven. We have it to the full now. It's up to us to tap into that and to renew our minds with the truth of who we are in the Spirit. So we have all the self-control. We have all the love. We have all the patience. So let us renew our minds to that truth and allow His Spirit to flow through us and we will have dominion over our flesh and over our emotions. Now, the tribe that is associated with this month is the tribe of Dan up here in the right corner. He is the fifth son of Jacob by Rachel's maid Bilhah. And his name means to judge, to rule, to mature. And you know, it takes maturity to be a just ruler right? And so we can learn a lot about the tribe of Dan through the blessings that were spoken over him. So the first one is Moses' blessing over the tribe of Dan in Deuteronomy 33:22. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp or a cub that leaps forth from Bashan. So in other words, they were ambitious, mighty warriors who loved to use their strength just as a cub would. And like a cub, though, their immaturity got them into trouble very often. And as we read in Judges, the tribe of Dan actually forgot Israel when she was in need because he was out busy leaping after his own pursuits. So, you know, the Lord is calling us to leap in this month right here is depicted on the chalkboard, but not in pride and not with our evil eye or even an eye of ego, as Dan often did, but to leap in faith and to leap out of fear. And we see this depicted this month in the constellation Capricorn. And the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and all the constellations point to Messiah. It's like the gospel is on circuit over our heads. So this month we are called to leap forth with our good eye, seeking the welfare of others, not our own selfish gain. And it's his perfect love that will cast out fear so we can leap forward in faith. Now, Jacob also blessed the tribe of Dan. You can check it out in Genesis chapter 49, 
verses 16 through 18, and it says, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel, and Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a horned snake in the path that bites the horse's heel so that his rider falls backwards. So Dan in God's army was positioned in the rear guard. They were at the very back and they were very crafty in battle and they could take down their enemy without even touching them. In fact, they knew how to find the Achilles heel of their enemy. And someone from the tribe of Dan that you may be familiar with is Samson. And so check out his life. It's recorded in the book of Judges. And you'll see that his life was dedicated to God at birth. So we can learn some things here from the life of Samson because he was known for his great strength, right? Many of us know about that, and his great hair, right? So he was a mighty warrior, but he could not harness his emotions. He had no self-control, and he let his eyes get the best of him. And in the end, as you read through his life, you'll notice that the enemies actually gouged out his eyes, and he was blinded. But it was then when he finally saw the light. He cried out to God, and in his last battle, he finally did take down the enemy without even touching them when he pulled down those pillars, but he also lost his life in that last battle as well. So there are so many lessons that we can learn from Samson and from the tribe of Dan. First of all, the importance of operating by the spirit and not by our flesh. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. And as we submit to God's love and authority, we will bring deliverance to others. So let us keep our eyes on him this month. Let's gain his strategies and we will take down the enemy himself without even touching him. Now, a final note on Dan, there's so much about him, that they are not only crafty in battle, but they were actually anointed craftsmen. They worked with metals and textiles, sculpting and even engraving. These are men like Oholiab that were from the tribe of Dan. They assisted Bezalel from the tribe of Judah in fabricating all of the furnishings of the tabernacle as God designed them. And so these men were appointed and anointed to bring out these designs that were designed by the Lord. And it took careful planning and organization and wisdom to implement these plans of God. And most of all, it took the Spirit of God to bring forth these beautiful creations. So this is a time to mature our artistic gifts for the Lord and not to bury our talents, but to develop our crafts. And the Word says that a man's gift will make room for him and will bring him before great men. So let us give our talents to the Lord, watch him multiply them and bless the work of our hands. So in closing, we can be encouraged as we move through this new month and new season because our Father is the giver of all good things and time is good because he made it. In Ecclesiastes, it says that he makes everything beautiful in his time. So Lord, we thank you for the gift of time, for time and seasons, Lord. We thank you for being our good shepherd, Lord. We thank you for shepherding us into good pastures. And Lord, we thank you for your great love for us that gives us confidence and assurance in you. So guys, let's abide in his love and abide in his word and we will move in his rest. We will move in maturity. We will look before we leap and we will look before we speak. And let's be reminded that Jesus even grew up in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So we can too, right? And if there are moments when we don't know what to do, let us consider the wisdom of King Jehoshaphat from 2 Chronicles 20 when he said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That is the key to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith, and he loves us with an everlasting love. Well, be encouraged, guys. Thanks for listening and blessings as you abide in him. 
into that and beyond.